Hello and a very warm welcome to World This Week by Latest Laws. This is our weekly program, so subscribe and press the bell icon to get notified. My name is Monica Rahar and let's get started by having a look at Supreme Court this week. The Honorable Supreme Court has laid down detailed guidelines governing the payment of maintenance in matrimonial disputes in the case of Rajneesh v. Neha. The guidelines which were laid down were with respect to the following aspects. The first being the issue of overlapping jurisdiction, the payment of interim maintenance, the criteria for determining quantum of maintenance, the date from which maintenance is to be awarded and lastly the enforcement of order of maintenance. Now with respect to the first aspect which is the overlapping jurisdiction, the court stated that since maintenance can be sought under various statutes namely the CRPC, the CPC, the Hindu Marriage Act and also the Domestic Violence Act, therefore the court held that when successive claims are made under different statutes, the court would consider adjustment of amount which is awarded and would also look at the eventuality or the need of making separate order awarding separate maintenance. And therefore, the court placed a duty on both the parties to disclose the factum of any previous proceeding which were pending or which has been decided by any court. Now with respect to the second issue which is criteria for determining the quantum of maintenance, the court stated that the court shall take into account the age and employment of the parties, the right of residence, the income of the spouse, the maintenance, maintenance of minor children, the serious disability or any illness which can be attributed to either the claimant or their children or any other dependent. And lastly, the court also stated that this list is not an exhaustive list and any other relevant factor can also be considered. Thirdly, with respect to the date from which the maintenance is to be awarded, it was held that the maintenance in all cases will be awarded from the, da from the date of filing the application for maintenance. And with respect to the payment of interim maintenance, the court stated that an affidavit of disclosure of assets and liabilities annexed to the judgment should be filled by both the parties in all the maintenance proceedings including the proceeding before either a family court or a district court or a magistrate court. And lastly, with respect to the enforcement or execution of order of maintenance, the court stated that an order or decree of maintenance can be enforced under Section 28A of the Hindu Marriage Act or Section 20 subsection 6 of the Domestic Violence Act or under Section 128 of the CRPC and relevant provisions of the CPC for execution of a money decree. The Honorable Supreme Court in the case of Hitesh Verma versus the state of Uttarakhand and another has held that insulting an SCST person is not an offence unless such insult is inflicted intentionally to humiliate such a member of the scheduled caste and scheduled tribe for the very reason that the person belonged to such caste or such tribe. A three-judge bench of the Supreme Court has reiterated that in case of absence of pleading, any amount of evidence will not help the party in a civil suit. The Apex Court has stayed the execution of an arbitral award that required the Indian Space Research Organization that is the ISRO's commercial arm Antrix Corporation to pay a compensation of rupees of $1.2 billion to a Bangalore-based startup called Devas Multimedia Private Limited over cancellation of an agreement which was entered between the two parties in the year 2005 and which was cancelled by Antrix Corporation in the year 2011. The Supreme Court has issued notice of contempt to Secretary of Maharashtra Assembly for writing a letter to Arnav Goswami on October 13 for breaching confidentiality of proceedings of the House by approaching the Supreme Court against the breach of privilege notice which was issued to Goswami. The Supreme Court has asked the Secretary to, remo to remain present during the hearing on his letter which is to take place after two weeks. In a relief to Spice Jet, the Apex Court in its interim order has stayed a Delhi High Court order to deposit Rs 243 crore with respect to the shared transfer dispute with its former promoter. 
the apex court has reserved its judgment on the fate of central vista project including the construction of a new parliament building and the central secretariat which was cha- under challenge in 10 separate pleas heard over 5 months on 24 occasions by a three judge bench now let's proceed to the next segment of our news analysis and have a look at the delhi high court this week The Future Group has filed a caveat petition in the High Court against Amazon anticipating that the company would approach the High Court over the deal of Future Group with Reliance Industries Limited. Now here we need to no- note one thing last week the Singapore International Arbitration Centre had restrained the Future Group from selling its assets to the Reliance Industries Limited the Future Group however has reportedly said that the order granting interim stay on the merger is not enforceable in India and it needs to be tried in an appropriate forum under the provisions of the Indian Arbitration Act Therefore in this light it was anticipated that Amazon may move the court for enforcement of the order of the Singapore International Arbitration Centre and hence this caveat petition The former Minister of State for Coal Dilip Ray along with three others was given a 3 year rigorous imprisonment by CBI judge special CBI judge for alleged conspiracy in coal allocation in Jharkhand to a private company in the year 1999 The conviction and sentencing order was challenged before the High Court of Delhi. The High Court refused to stay the conviction. However, the court suspended the sentence while agreeing to hear the appeal on November 25. Now let's proceed to the Bombay High Court and have a look at what transpired before the court this week. The High Court has refused Arnav Goswami's appeal to be released immediately and posted his plea for further hearing on November 6 pursuant to the plea of the state seeking time. Goswami was arrested on Wednesday and remanded to judicial custody till November 18 by Chief Judicial Magistrate at Ali Bagh. He was arrested uh, on Wednesday by Ali Bagh police in a 2018 abetment to suicide case of an interior designer named Anwar Nayak and his mother. The High Court has also rejected bail pleas of former DLF promoters Kapil and Dheeraj Vadhavans who were accused in Yes Bank money laundering case. A single judge bench of the High Court passed this order on plea made by the Vadhavan brothers. Due to the COVID-19 crisis, the High Court has extended interim protections against eviction and demolition which was granted till December 22. holding that the bmc's action of withholding salary to its physically disabled employees who were absent during covid-19 lockdown was illegal the high court has directed the civic body to pay the dues in two installments the first will be paid before diwali and the second within 45 days thereafter now let's proceed and have a look at an important update that have come from the high court of punjab in haryana The High Court in response to a petition seeking protection from arrest in a civil matter has held that matter was purely of a civil nature and allegations of cheating and criminal breach of trust cannot be leveled in such a case. The court also expresses concern about the tendency of giving criminal procedure undertones to a civil dispute by lodging FIRs etc and the court court has asked the police to stop registering FIRs in civil matters. Now let's move on to the Chhattisgarh High Court. The High Court in a in a very significant decision has ruled that Special courts which are constituted under section 14 of the Scheduled Castes and Scheduled Tribes Prevention of Atrocities Act are empowered to direct registration of FIRs under section 156 subsection 3 of the CRPC provided or subject to filing of two prior applications under section 154 subsection 1 and thereafter under section 154 subsection 3 of the court by the complainant now let's proceed with the miscellaneous segment of our news analysis the haryana assembly has passed a bill to give 75% reservation in private sector to job seekers who belong to the state amid strong objection from the opposition the government has brought in ordinance amending section 36 and deleting the eight schedule of the arbitration act 1996 
The state of Kerala has joined the League of States, namely West Bengal, Rajasthan, Chhattisgarh and Maharashtra to withdraw its general consent given to the Central Bureau of Investigation. The e-committee of the top court, that is the Supreme Court, which looks at all technological matters related to the court, has set up a panel of four judges to frame rules for live streaming of hearings in the high courts and trial courts in a bid to promote transparency in court operations. The President notified the Commission for Air Quality Management in NCR and Adjoining Area Ordinance, which has the capacity of creating a statutory body to manage air pollution with the power to issue direction to the state and also initiate criminal proceedings against violators, leading to a fine up to Rs 1 crore and jail term of 5 years. BJP leader and lawyer Ashwini Upadhyay has urged Attorney General K.K. Venugopal to reconsider his decision declining consent to initiate contempt proceedings against the Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister and his principal advisor for making allegations against a judge of the Supreme Court. Karnataka CM B.S. Yadrappa has said that the government would bring in laws on interfaith marriage and also against cow slaughter in the state. That's all we have for this week. The link of all these news updates is made available in the description section. You may refer to them for further information. Thank you for being with us.